Welcome to video 6C and we're continuing our work with circles and we're just going to have a bunch of relationships between segments on circles that we call, and I, let's go over here just again do a little vocabulary. Um, we've already talked about the chord. We've talked about a tangent that it just hits once like this. And then a secant line or segment hits the circle twice on the interior. And we're going to talk about angles created when these two type these three types of segments meet in or outside of a circle. So this says secant angles, but technically that's kind of weird. I'm going to write secants and angles. That's probably a better way to write it. But we're going to have two little situations we've got going here. First of all, when you have a circle and you have two chords intersecting on the inside, and the reason this falls under the secant part is because if I extended each of these, they become secant. So they're pieces of secant. So a chord is a piece of a secant. See, if I go like here, now I've got a secant line. So. Um, I'm going to have you go and bold this in over here. I'm going to have you call that arc one. Instead of using variables, I'm going to use words. I think that'll make these a lot easier for you. I'm going to call this arc two. And when these chords are intersecting and cutting off those arcs, the angle created in here which I'm going to call X, which is actually the same as this one because they're vertical angles and vertical angles are congruent. The angle created in there, which I'm going to call X, is equal to one half of the sum of those arcs. And I'm just going to write arc one plus arc two. Makes it easier. If you would to Google this and look it up online, they're going to have all these denoted with variables and measures and all that stuff. But in the end result, you just do a half of what you get when you add up the two arcs. So that's our first relationship we're going to use in this section. And our second one is going to be when we have a circle and we have two secants meeting at the same exterior point. And you'll notice there's an angle created in here as well. And there's two intercepted arcs created by that angle. And again, I'd bold this in, and I'm going to call this big arc. I'm going to go in here and call this little arc. And the angle created, again, I'll call it angle, which on my diagram is x. I'll let you catch up here. The angle created is equal to one half, same as over here, but instead of adding the arcs, we subtract them. And we have to make sure we grab the big one first because we can't go negative. So we do big arc. Actually, instead of writing the word arc, I think I'll put an arc symbol over it. So we do big arc minus the little arc. So let's go practice that skill. Again, you just need to match the picture with the property and write it out and you'll be good. So what's angle question mark? That's an angle. The angle is equal to one half of the sum of the two intercepted arcs. So I do one half of 175 plus 55. When I do 175 plus 55, I get a nice 230. So it's going to be one half of 230, which is 115 degrees. So right here at angle question mark, 115, this one's 115. And remember, I could easily get the ones next to them if I wanted to, because they're a linear pair and make a line together. So if there had been a question asking you for this, you would just do 180 minus the 115 because they're making a line in there. So you can work your way around and find multiple missing pieces if need be. So on the next page, we're going to continue. 
And now I've got the second situation going where we said that the angle, which is where the question mark is, you can even write angle question mark, is equal to one half. And that second relationship that I gave you when they intersect or meet out here on an exterior point, I wrote that you do big arc minus little arc. So you do 175 minus 57, and then you take that and you divide it by 2. So you're going to have 118 with this. And then you're going to cut 118 in half, and that gives you a nice 59 degree angle. So again, all these things, second semester, they're so formulaic. And again, I've used this reference a lot, but formulas are just maps. Just make sure you grab the right map. Make sure you don't try to do it without the map. All right, and you'll be just fine. This one's an old one. This is what we call an inscribed angle. So you should go back in your notes and look for a picture that looks like this and what I said about the inscribed angle. Central angles are equal to the arcs that they cut off. So had that been in the center, this would equal this. But inscribed angles are half of the arc that it cuts off. So 70 degrees is equal to one half of the arc that it cuts off. And you would solve that. I'm not going to do the algebra on this one, but you just, I would get rid of this half instead of distributing it in. I'd multiply both sides by two and go from there. So, in 6.6b, so kind of a similar section, we're going to have a couple different situations going on. And I'm going to put, split this down the middle again. What you're going to have is a tangent meeting a piece of a secant, also known as a chord. And there's an angle created in here call that X, and then there's an arc that's cut up. And the relationship is that that angle, and again, this is all about angle measures, that angle in 6-6, six, six, the next section will be about lengths of those pieces. Um, angle X is equal to one half of the arc it cuts off. So that one's an easy one to use, and you don't need to memorize these, you just need to know how to use them. And our second one is really similar to one I just did. Don't draw this, but I said, um, we did it in the last section. I said you do one half big arc minus little arc when you have a secant and another secant. It holds the same when you have a secant and a tangent. So suppose I did a tangent and then a secant. So go ahead and draw that. It's got the exact same relationship that two secants did. We've got an exterior angle created we have what I call the big arc, and we have what I call, I should do that in another color, we have what I like to call the little arc. And the relationship is the same as the one I just gave you for the two secants. It's simply that that angle that I've labeled X up there, is equal to one half of the big arc minus the little arc. So we've got two new maps that you need to use, and we'll go do that right now. A couple examples on the next page. Find the measure of the arc or the angle indicated. So you're going to match this with that first picture I just drew in that concept box where I said that the angle is equal to one half of the arc that it cuts off. And this one needs a little finesse because that arc that it cuts off is over here. And I'm being asked to find the rest of it. But remember, a circle all the way around is 360 degrees. So if I can get that red piece, I can subtract it from 360 to get the yellow piece. Well, if the angle is half the arc, then 76 was one half that red arc, which means that red arc had to be double 76. If I took half of it and got the red arc, then it must have been 152. So 152 has to equal the red arc. 
And if the question mark had been out here, I'm done. But the question mark was out here. So for me to get the yellow, I'm going to have to say that the question mark is equal to 360 minus the red arc, which was 152 degrees. So when we do 360 minus 152, we'll get a grand total or difference of 208. So that yellow arc right there is 208 degrees in measure. Next up. What's my relationship here? I've got these two tangents meeting like this. And my relationship is that the angle is equal to one half of the big arc, we'll work on that in just a second, minus the little arc. Let's go take a look at what that gives us. So I'm gonna go color code these again, big arc in yellow. I'm going to do little arc in purple. And I've got to figure out how to write expressions for those. Well, let's call question mark x, shall we? That'll be a lot easier. So I'm going to call this an x right here. And that's what I'm looking for. Well, you might think there's no way to get it. There, You've got to be tricky here. Because we know that the purple plus the yellow equals 360. So if I'm going to call the purple x, little arc, whoops, I want to grab a purple pen for that one. If I'm going to call that x right here, then what do I call the yellow? The yellow one is going to be 360 minus x, or 360 minus the purple. So out here on the yellow one, it's going to be 360 minus x. So kind of tricky. So that's my big arc. So I've got big, 360 minus x, minus little, which is just x. Notice if I add yellow plus purple, the x's disappear and I get 360, which it should be because it's a circle. So I'm going to rewrite the rest of this. I have my angle has to equal one half of big minus little. So hopefully, in the, col hopefully the color coding helps. Now I know you've been taught to distribute the half in, but it really is a lot of times easier just to get rid of it. I'm going to double both sides because I don't want to take half of everything. And if I double both sides, I get 100 over here and it'll cancel these off over here. So in the parentheses, I'm going to have 360 minus x minus another x, which is going to be minus 2x. So if I solve this one, I'm going to choose to, well, let's just subtract 360 from both sides. I'll get negative 260 is equal to negative 2x. So when I divide both sides by negative 2, I get x or the purple arc is equal to 130. So that one was a little trickier. Still not too bad, though. You can handle it. You guys are smart, right? You can do it. Just follow them like a map. If you get stuck, you got to be clever. All right, so let's go take a look at this one. Again, we've got that exterior angle, which is 3x plus 13, right here in blue, has to equal 1 half of big arc. Let's go color code it again. Big arc, let's say, is green. 140. Minus little arc, let's do that one in purple, 48. And I'm going to solve this for x. Well, on this one, I think I will dump the half in because they're even, and that doesn't make my brain hurt, so why not? So I'm going to do 3x plus 13 is equal to, eh, why don't I even just subtract these first? What is 140 minus 48? That would be smarter for me to do, right? Just go ahead and subtract those in there, and you get a 92. So it's going to equal 1 half of 92. 1 half of 92 is 46, so it's 3x plus 13 is equal to 46. And again, just in case I went too fast, I'm going to repeat. I matched this with the property from the previous page. That property said that the angle is equal to 1 half of big arc in green minus little arc in purple. And then I just subtracted these and got a 92. 
I took half of that and got a 46. And now I've got 3x is equal to, I subtract the 13. And I've got it equal to 33. Dividing both sides by 3 gives me an x of 11. A lot of algebra 1 in that one. And I think this is the last one, but I'm not positive. So let's go give her a whirl. So again, we've got the meeting at this exterior point, And our theorem says that the angle measure, 5x minus 5, is equal to 1 half of big arc. Again, let's go color coded. It makes it easier to follow, right? Big arc. 190 minus little arc, 13x minus 7. Now, I don't want to underplay what I just did here. I had to put the red arc in parentheses because I'm subtracting all of it. Without the parentheses, I'd just be subtracting 13x. So you got to be a little careful with that. I think what I'm going to do is clean up what's in those parentheses. I've got the 190. I'm going to have a minus 13x and then a plus 7. So I'm just cleaning up inside those parentheses there. And then, not dealing with the left-hand side yet. I'm not dealing with the half out front yet. I am going to do a 197 minus 13x. Now, what, and again, I've talked about this several times. You do what your brain likes better. Do you want to take half of these? The answer is yes, go ahead and do it because it's legal. And you've already, always been taught distribute, hippity hoppity distributive property. But I would counter that it's easier to get rid of this by doubling it. And then if I double the left hand side, I'm good to go. So I'll have 10x minus 10 is equal to, the twos would cancel, and I get 197 minus 13x. And again, I'm solving this for x, so we've got to consolidate them on one side of the equals. I'm going to add 13x to both sides, giving me 23x's over here. Bing, bang, boom, right? I added them to both sides, so wiped them out over here. I'm going to add 10 to both sides. I'm going to divide both sides by 23. 207 divided by 23 is equal to a beautiful 9. Isn't that pretty? And is that what it asked me for? Was my goal to solve for x? I believe it was, so I'm done. Let's go see what's next on our agenda. Maybe there's a stop sign. Yep, so you are to go work on a worksheet. This, um, don't take these lightly. Have your notes out and use them like a map. You don't have to memorize this stuff. You just have to be able to apply it. Peace out, Girl Scout.